guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Tiffany Hansen with Hooked for Hope. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna show you how to make a crochet blanket border that I actually created myself. I'm calling it the Crochet Leaf Stitch Border. In this stitch, it's actually a combination of two different stitches. You see the shell stitch, and on top of each shell, I put a little pico stitch. I'm calling it the leaf stitch because it looks like the bottom part of a leaf with the leaf itself and then the little stem, which I think is really cute. So I actually had quite a few people contact me after making the tassel throw blanket and they just didn't want to put tassels on the blanket. They wanted to put an actual border around the blanket, but they weren't sure which border paired best with this blanket. So I put together this crochet pattern, this border, because I wanted something elegant, something that didn't look too simple and bring down the, the appearance of the blanket. And I think this crochet border works perfectly. I think they pair very well together. If at any point in this video you do like what you see, please push that thumbs up button. And if you haven't yet, subscribe to my channel. That way you don't miss any of my videos. I release two brand new videos every single week covering a wide range of different types of crochet projects and you're not going to want to miss out. The actual shell part of this border does have a stitch count requirement, a multiple of four plus one. So the first thing we're going to tackle in our foundation row of our border is making sure that we meet that stitch count requirement. And if your stitches don't quite hit that multiple of four plus one, I'm going to show you a trick on how to make any blanket work with this border. Sound great? Okay, first thing we're gonna do though is go to the materials that you're gonna need to make this beautiful border. The materials that you're gonna need to make this beautiful crochet border are a size four weighted yarn or a worsted weight or Aran yarn. Depending on where you are in the world, they call it something different. Uh, if you're making this pattern and you're noticing that the stitches look a little cramped or they start to ruffle, you can always go down to a three weighted light weight yarn and that will hopefully help with that whole ruffle and allow the border to lay flat. Uh, you're going to need a size H or five millimeter crochet hook and a, si a pair of scissors and that's it. That's all you're going to need for the materials. So let's go ahead and dive right into making this beautiful crochet border. So like I said in the very beginning of the video, uh, we do have the shell stitch that has a stitch count requirement of being in a multiple of four plus one. So what I'm going to do in our foundation row of our border that I'm going to put around this little swatch is we're going to count how many stitches are along the top and then we're going to count how many rows are along the side of our blanket. Okay, so what I want you to do right now is I want you to take a second, grab a piece of paper and a pin and go ahead and count how many stitches you have across the top and how many rows you have in your blanket. Okay, go ahead and pause the video and take care of that right now. Okay, so I counted along my swatch that I have 25 stitches along the top and I have 17 rows within this little swatch, okay? If you're a brand new crocheter, you might also wanna count how many uh, stitches were in your foundation row, just to make sure that that number is the same exact number of stitches that you ended with. Sometimes being a beginner crocheter, uh, we can either add a stitch or drop a stitch and the number of stitches in our foundation row are different than the number of stitches that we ended with. So if you're a fairly new crocheter, you might wanna just give that a peek by counting how many stitches were in your foundation row also, okay? So the shell stitch has a stitch count requirement of a multiple of four plus one. So this is how you're gonna figure out if the stitch is going to actually work with your blanket. So I have 25 stitches on the top of my blanket. I'm gonna subtract one because of this right here. And that gives me 24, okay? Now I'm gonna see if 24 can be divided by four. Divided by four. And it can, it's six, okay? So my the top part of my blanket, the very top, is perfectly fine to work with this stitch. So now let's check out the side. So my rows, I have 17 rows. Uh, subtract one for that right there. That gives me 16. Is 16 divided by four or divisible by four? Yes, it is. So I know that the number of rows I have along the side of my blanket is going to work with this stitch. It meets the stitch count requirement. 
but let's say yours does not. So example, let's say you have along the top of your blanket, now these are all gonna just be numbers I'm throwing out, but let's say there's 30 stitches along the top and you have rows, let's say you have 23 rows, okay? So you take your number of stitches minus one, and in this case, I get 29, okay? Then I'd take 29 and I'd see, is it divisible by four? And it's not. It ends up being 7.25. I already did the math. So, so I'd say, okay, so that doesn't work. What, what if I added a stitch? Okay, so I'll do 30. 30, so I'd say, okay, I'm gonna add one. So I'm gonna do 31 minus one equals 30. So is 30 divisible by four? And I'd say, no, it ends up being 7.5. Okay, fine, well, let's add two stitches. So this is adding one stitch. Let's add two stitches. So it'd be 32. 32 minus one equals 31. Is 31 divisible by four? Close, but no, it's 7.75. You're like, okay. Fine, let's do one more. So I'm gonna add three stitches to my original count. That gives me 33. 33 minus one equals 32. All right, is 32 divisible by four? Yes, it is, it's eight. So in order for my top row to work with this stitch, I need to add three stitches to the top row, okay? Now let's try the rows. So I start with 23 rows, minus one equals 22. Is 22 divisible by four? No, it's not. It gives me 5.5, okay? So let's add a stitch. So that gives me 24 minus one equals 23. Is 23 divisible by four? No, it's not. I get 5.75. All right, let's add two stitches. So two plus 23, 23 being our original number of rows, two plus 23 gives us 25. Okay, so 25 minus one for our stitch count requirement equals 24. Can we divide 24 by four? Yes, we can, evenly by six. So in order to make our side of our blanket work with our stitch count requirement, we need to add two stitches, okay? That's the math, that's all you have to do to meet the stitch count requirement of this border and apply it to any blanket, not just this one, but any blanket, okay? If you have any other questions on that, feel free to ask me, I would love to help. As for us right now, now you know, so for me, I meet the stitch count requirement with my stitches and my rows that I can just go and I don't have to add anything. You know, do you meet or do you need to add some stitches? And I'm gonna show you how to add stitches if you need to. All right, so we're gonna keep that handy. We're gonna grab the yarn that we're gonna use for our blanket border. With a small tail, small tail, we're going to make our slip knot, attach our crochet hook, great. In the top right-hand corner, we're going to slip stitch in that first stitch to attach our yarn to the project. Perfect. All right, we're going to make a row of half double crochets. That's gonna be our foundation row of the entire piece of work. So I'm going to chain one, chain one, put one half double crochet in that same stitch that we slip stitched into, right there. and one half double crochet in each stitch across if you meet the stitch count requirement, okay? 
if you do not meet the stitch count requirement, say for example, here, it said I needed to add three stitches along the top. What I would do is in the same stitch that I just put one half double crochet into, I would put a second half double crochet. And that is my first increase or my first additional stitch. Okay, and then I would keep going. One half double crochet each stitch. And then maybe towards the middle, I would add my second half double crochet stitch increase. Okay, so there's two. I need three, so then I would keep one half double crochet in each stitch. And then say right here, I would put one and then I would put a second half double crochet in the third stitch. And that would be my third increase or my third additional stitch to meet that stitch count requirement. Okay, that's all you have to do. And I just make sure that I evenly spread them out. That way they're not all clumped together. Okay, and then continue with just putting one half double crochet in each stitch across that top row. Okay, great. When you get to the very last stitch or that corner stitch, you're going to put three half double crochets in that stitch. The first half double crochet will be the very last stitch of this row. The second half double crochet will be our turning stitch to turn us to the side. And the third half double crochet stitch will be the very first stitch for this, this side of our work. Okay, so when we're on the side, we now ref refer back to our math. Do you meet the stitch count requirement or do you need to add any stitches? Okay, in my example swatch, I met stitch count requirement, so I did not need to add. But for this example, they needed to add two stitches. When it comes to knowing how many stitches to put in the side of each row, if your stitch on the row was one single crochet or you only needed to chain one to get to the next row, you're just gonna put one half double crochet in the side of that row, okay? If your row was a half double crochet, then you're just gonna put one half double crochet in the side of that row. If your row had a, ended in a double crochet, or you had to chain two to get to the next row, then you're gonna put two stitches or two half double crochets in the side of that row, okay? So in this case of this example, this top row was just a single crochet. This first stitch met the requirements for that row. So now I'm gonna move on to the next row. <clears throat> in this row, I end with a double crochet. So I'm gonna put two half double crochets in the side of that row. Okay, then my next row is a single crochet. So I'm just gonna put one half double crochet in the side of that row. And then my next row is double crochets. So I'm gonna put two half double crochets in the side of that row. Now, if I needed to add any stitches, for example, this would be a single crochet, so I'd only want to put one half double crochet in the side of that row. If I needed to add a stitch, I might add right there. So there is my first additional stitch. Next row, it's a double crochet, so I'm going to put two half double crochets in the side of that row. Okay, on the very last stitch here, guys, we're gonna put three half double crochets to turn to our other side of our work. Great, now we're all set up for this side of our work. Okay, so now we're on the very bottom of our work, on the very bottom of our blanket. 
For some of us, this bottom count is going to be the exact same count that we had on the very top row. For others of us, this count might be different than the number of stitches we had on the top. So just make sure that you did the math, you did the check, you counted. Was this number the same as this, this number? And if yes, then we're going to continue the same count that we had on this. So if you met stitch count requirement along your top, then you're not gonna need to add any stitches on the bottom. If you did need to add stitches on the top, then you will need to add stitches on the bottom, okay? If your count on the bottom was different than your count of rows or count of stitches on your top, then hopefully you did the math to know how many extra stitches you needed to add along the bottom or if your bottom did actually meet stitch count requirement. In this case, I did meet stitch count requirement, so I can go ahead and I can just put one half double crochet in each stitch all the way to the other corner. Right, last stitch here, we're gonna put three half double crochets. One, two, three. That sets us up for our very last side where we're working along the rows. So whatever you needed to add however many stitches you needed to add on this side of your rows, you will just repeat on this side here. If you met stitch count requirement for your rows, you won't need to add any stitches across. Just remember that if the row ends with one single crochet or a chain one, you're just gonna put one half double crochet in the side of that row. If the very last stitch of the row was a half double crochet, you're just gonna put one half double crochet in the side of that row. If your row ended with a double crochet or a chain two, you're gonna put two half double crochets in the side of that row. So this right here was a double crochet. So I just need to make sure that I put two half double crochets in the side of that row. And continue on making sure that if you needed to add any stitches, that you make sure you add those stitches. Great guys, okay, we have met our very last stitch here for this side. You'll see that there's already a half double crochet in that stitch. There's the slip stitch that we connected with and one half double crochet. Because there's already one half double crochet, we're going to only need to put two more half double crochets in this corner to meet that three half double crochet requirement. So one, two, and then that was three. So we're gonna slip stitch into the top just to close off this foundation row of our work, okay? So here we go. The foundation row is the most important row of your entire border because it sets up the entire border to make sure that the pattern will work. So really the foundation row is the most important and then we dive right into the pattern. So for row two of our foundation row, we're gonna start making those shells. So we're gonna chain one, single crochet in that very first stitch that we just slip stitched into. We're gonna skip a stitch, so skip this stitch. And in this third stitch right here, we're gonna put five double crochets, okay? So one, two, three, four, five. Then we're gonna skip a stitch and single crochet into the next stitch. Single crochet. Then we're going to skip a stitch. In the next stitch, we're gonna put five double crochets. One, two, three, four, five, skip a stitch, next stitch, we're gonna single crochet. All right, then that's the repeating pattern, guys. We're going to skip a stitch, 
five double crochets, skip a stitch, single crochet. Skip a stitch, five double, skip, one single crochet, okay? And you continue that all the way around the entire work. I'm gonna go ahead and meet you at this corner though, just so that way you feel comfortable with the corner and we can continue on. Okay, so we've come uh, we have come upon this corner. I just did my group of five doubles, going to skip a stitch, and the next is just one single. And you don't skip a beat, guys. You just continue across. So skip one and then five double. Nothing special for the corners. Okay, so just finished my next corner. So here's the corner that we just did. Next corner, again, just finished my group of five, skipping one stitch, one single crochet, skipping one, five. Okay, so this corner, guys, this is my third corner. So this is where I started, corner one, corner two. My third corner looks a little different. I am gonna skip one, single crochet here, skip one, and so this particular shell is going to end up being in the very corner. So each corner may hit a little different and that's okay. Just wanted you to be aware that that could happen. Just keep going with the pattern. Okay, guys, so in this case right here, we have just come upon, we've just made our last group of five double crochets. We're coming to the close of row two. We're going to skip the first stitch, single crochet in the next stitch, but also single crochet in the following stitch after that. So we're gonna go single crochet, single crochet. And to get to the other side of that row, let's go ahead and put one more single crochet in that same stitch and slip stitch into the very first single crochet of that row to branch us over. Okay, so we have just finished our second row of our border. Looks beautiful. Oh my goodness, look at all of those shelves. Great. Okay, so for our last row, row three of our border, you're actually going to slip stitch into the first three stitches, okay? So looking at the shell here, we're going to slip stitch into the first double crochet, slip stitch into the second double crochet, slip stitch into the third double crochet. So now we're at the very top of that shell, okay? Chain three, one, two, three. Slip stitch into the very first uh, chain that you just made. So slip stitch and that makes the little peak go. Then you're going to slip stitch into the next six stitches, okay? So coming down, very next stitch, slip stitch. So one, two, three, four, five, six, so now you should be on the very top of the next shell and make sure that you're actually in the, the third double crochet, okay? So one, two, we're actually in the top of that third double crochet right there. First, second, third, top, okay? That is the most important part. We wanna make sure we're on the very top of that third double crochet, very top of that next shell. Chain three, one, two, three. Slip stitch in the very first chain. There's our pico. And slip stitch in the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, again, making sure we're at the very top of that third double crochet. So one, two, three, we're in the top of it. Chain three, one, two, three, slip stitch into the very first chain for your pico and slip stitch into the next six stitches. One, two, three, four, 
five, six, right? And then you're just gonna repeat that pattern all the way around your entire border. Okay. okay, to close up our border, guys, I just did my Pico first slip stitch, second slip stitch, third slip stitch. All right, I have ended my row. I'm now going to skip this stitch, go straight, so skip that first single crochet in that corner, go to the second single crochet of that corner, and slip stitch into that stitch to close off my border, to close my blanket. Next thing you're gonna do, just grab your scissors, cut your yarn however long you need to weave in your end, yarn over, pull through your loop, pull tight, and you're done. There's your border, guys. I hope you love it. All right, guys, that is the Leaf Stitch Blanket Border. If you have any questions at all, make sure you comment in the comment section below, or you can contact me through Facebook, Instagram, or Twitter. You could also email me at hookforhope at gmail.com. If you enjoyed this video, you might like my other blanket border videos that you can find right here. Also check out this video, which is just a recommended video for you to watch. Thank you so much for crocheting with me today. I always love crocheting with you. I hope you have an amazing day, and I will see you with my next video. Bye, guys. Bye.